Hello, Internet Hookah Pros and YouTubes alike. No, I'm here. Today we're going to be smoking the Alchemist Stout Black Black Moon Melon. I believe that was the title of it. If it's wrong, just look in the description of this video. You'll see the correct name. I think that was it. Ugh, long day, but at the end of a long day, I do prefer my melons to be from the moon. And this particular bowl is from a watermelon moon. A minty cool watermelon moon. Now the mint is very suspicious in this one. It is not necessarily present. It is more of a gentle menthol. It's very interesting. Very interesting. But again, the stout lines seem to have a funky texture. A velcro-like fuzzy fine chop. I mean, very fine chop. If you're going to call it a chop at all, more like a mince. With a good amount of juice. And I do mean a good amount of juice in this one. Mmm. Moon melons. So, when I said watermelon moon, there's more to it. I believe that there is a stinky bit of cantaloupe stuck in there, too. So, it's, it's, it's very complex. On the surface, it doesn't seem complex. The smell out of the bag does not seem complex. But when you get into smoking, it certainly develops some very interesting, deep, rich flavors. Now, one thing that complements it greatly, the Alchemist's um, bourbon barrel aging process. It adds a undertone of sweetness from the bourbon that is very difficult to detect. You usually detect it near the absolute end of the bowl, if at all. However, that certain kind of sweetness is pumped up to the maximum. It is that same kind of sweet that lends the sweetness to this Melons from the Moon. It is predominantly watermelon. It is predominantly almost a Jolly Rancher-esque watermelon candy. Whereas I am not usually fond of candy flavors, this is nice. When they get close to Jolly Rancher-ish stuff, I do tend to like it. So I've had this going for a few minutes before starting the review, and already I can tell it does have a buzz factor to this one. I am very pleasantly surprised, even though it is very gentle. Now, if I'm going to hazard a guess at the percentages of what's in here, I'm going to say it's 70% watermelon, 20% cantaloupe, and perhaps 10% almost strawberry? Yes, 10% strawberry, 20% cantaloupe, and 70% watermelon. That adds up, right? 70, yeah, yeah whatever. Anyhow. That's what it tastes like, and that tastes amazing. But what happened uh, to that mint? Well, that mint... Uh, excuse the background noise of a duck or a goose having a heart attack in the background. Uh, that mint is not present, but it's there. It is menthol. It is the cooling of a menthol. It's lovely with this. Very lovely. There are some dark, earthy notes. And let's explore that a little bit. Let's see what it's like at the end of the bowl. We'll be right back. Hello, folks. We're back. We're near the end of the bowl by the taste. Of it. And 
by the duration. So, what happened to it? The cantaloupe came forward more. The watermelon has died down a bit, and the strawberry has become more artificial, if it's there anymore. It's okay. It's very okay. It was delicious to begin with. And as it's tapered off, the mutations it has done are not bad. They're just... kind of expected. It remains its cooling factor, and it also remains its buzz factor, which is starting to surprise me. It's creeping up on NACLA levels. I don't know if it's just because I'm really hungry, which I'm not that hungry, or what, but it is definitely have more punch to it than the lemon mint. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice, Mr. Alchemist. Very good. Uh, as far as a overall rating, I feel like I have to knock at some points because it's intended to be in the stout line, and yet it's not earthy. But none of them seem to be, and I don't think they're intending it for it to be. It's just intended to be a stronger tobacco. The tobacco tones and flavors are not coming through. So I'm going to ignore that as a factor in the rating. I'm just going to rate the flavor first, which, oh, excuse me, Belch, as I mentioned flavor. Sorry, folks. Um, oh, holy, mm, I think I'm done. Rating of just the flavor. It's called Moon Melons. I have no reference for what a moon melon tastes like. But if I had to make it up, I'd love it to be this. It's very nice. I do not normally care for cantaloupe, but when it's mixed this way, it's good. It's good. So, I can't rate accuracy. It's a unrealistically sweet watermelon, etc. It's not natural. So I'll just rate how much I like it personally, which I don't like to do. I'm going to have to rate it at an 8.2, which is extremely high for how I rate stuff for just my own personal taste. I think it's very newbie accessible. Accessible? Accessible. It, newbies will like it. I experienced folk, if they like sweeter stuff, will like it too. So, overall, good smoke. Nice. I'm going to have to say good night, Moon, and I'll see you next ball. Hello, this is the addendum for the Moon Melon from the Stout line of Alchemist. Why an addendum? Because I've now overpacked it in Egyptian bowl. A lot more heat. I wanted to see what it would do. It has changed. It has changed big time. One quarter of the way through the bowl, the melon disappeared. And I thought to myself, damn. I killed it. I thought that the flavor was going to go bye-bye. No. All of a sudden, a spicy, throat-drying peppermint jumps out. When I say peppermint, it was peppermint feeling. The flavor was Altoids. Just Altoids. Altoids Red 10 Original, curiously strong, and so is this. It goes into the lineup of some of my strongest mints now. 
it is amazing. If there's any of the melon left, it is a ghosty background. But overpack that moon melons and you get an Altoid mint flavor that freezes your throat and clears your sinuses. It is now like two flavors in one, depending on how you pack it. I have never come across a flavor that presents two different sides of itself so violently different than this uh, Alchemist Moon Melon. Amazing. Strange. Different. If you've got that Moon Melon, I want you to overpack it in a clay bowl and tell me if it just goes Jekyll and Hyde on you. Not one good, not one evil, but just completely polar. Yeah, the breeze is taking away my smoke. But, beforehand? Well, you just watched the review. You know, the melon's flavor was predominant and the mint was a backseat. Total parallel. Alright, until next bowl, folks.